Welcome to Game Dev Guidance. In this video, I will show you how to set up a twin stick shooter controller. This tutorial requires the use of a controller and the new Unity input system. The left stick will control the character's movement and rotation. Once the right stick gets some action, it will trigger the character into a ready fire animation state and override the rotation accordingly. I will show you how to set up this controller using root motion, as well as using the character controller component provided by Unity. If you are unfamiliar with setting up a character for animation in Unity, check the description for links to my Animation Basics 101 tutorial series. If you find this tutorial useful, please like and subscribe to show support in this epic journey through game development. Let's dive in. Make sure you have the new input system installed. Go to Window and select Package Manager. In the selector drop-down, select Unity Registry. Navigate through the list until you find Input System. Install this package into your project if it's not currently installed. This will require Unity to restart. I will be using the same CHAD model from my Animation Basics video series for this tutorial, but feel free to use any character you'd like. Head over to Mixamo.com and download an idle animation, a running animation, and a pistol locomotion animation pack. If you are unsure how to set up and rig characters and animations in Unity, check out the first couple of videos from my Animation Basics series. We will be using the idle, walk, walk backward, and both strafe animations from the pistol pack in this tutorial. Remember to set up all your animations. Make sure their animation type is humanoid, and adjust the settings in the animation tab, like so. Create an animator controller if you haven't already, and let's begin setting up our animations. Let's start by creating the parameters we will be needing. Since the default blend parameter is a float, let's rename it to movement underscore amount. Create two more float parameters by clicking the plus button and name them aim underscore x and aim underscore y. Now, create a bool parameter is underscore aiming. That should be all the parameters we need for this video. Right click in the animator window and select create state from new blend tree. With the new state selected, rename it to locomotion. Double click the locomotion state to enter it and with the blend tree selected, set the parameter to movement amount. Add two new motion fields, set the first motion to be the idle animation and the second motion to be the run animation. If we hit the play button in the blend tree preview window, we can watch our animations blend as we adjust the movement amount slider in the animator window. Perfect! Now head back to the base layer. Create another blend tree state and name this one pistol underscore locomotion. Double click the newly created state to enter it and make sure that the blend tree node is selected. Set the blend type to 2D freeform Cartesian, then set the parameters to aim underscore x and aim underscore y. Add five new motion fields. Set the first motion to pistol idle. Make sure its position X and Y are both set to zero. Set the second motion to strafe left with an X position of negative one and Y position of zero. Set the third motion to strafe right with an X position of one and Y position of zero. Set the fourth motion to pistol walk with an X position of zero and Y position of one. Set the last motion to pistol walk backwards with an X position of zero and Y position of negative one. Hit the play button within the blend tree preview and change the values of aim X and aim Y in the animator window. As you can see, the character is now always aiming in one direction with the ability to walk in every direction. Head back to the base layer. Right click the locomotion state, select make transition, then click the pistol locomotion state. Select the transition and uncheck has exit time. Add a new condition. Select is aiming from the drop-down menu and set the value to true. 
Now right click the pistol locomotion state, select make transition, then click the locomotion state. Select this transition, and uncheck has exit time. Add a new condition here as well, but this time, set the is aiming value to false. If we enter play mode now, and toggle the is aiming parameter from within the animator window, we should see our character transition from between our two locomotion states. Our animator is now set up and we are ready to begin programming our controls. Right click in the project window, hover over create, then select C sharp script. Let's name this, player controller. Once the script is ready, drag it onto the character object in the hierarchy then double click the script to open it. Let's start by defining the fields we are going to need. Declare a private animator, named animator. Declare a private vector 3, named v3, underscore, movement. Declare another private vector 3, named v3, underscore, aim. Finally, declare a private float, named rotation, underscore, speed, and initialize it to 1000. In the start method, set animator, equals, get component, animator. This will hook up our animator field to the animator attached to this game object. Now hop inside the update method. Let's start by setting up a controller reference. Declare a new var, named controller, and set it equal to gamepad.current. The gamepad class requires the using directive, unity engine, dot, input system. If no gamepad is connected, we should return from this method. Write an if statement, and check if controller, equals null. If this condition is true, then call return to exit the method call. Now that we have access to a controller, let's set our vector 3 fields. Start by setting v3, movement, equal to a new vector 3. Passing controller, dot left stick, dot x, dot value for the first parameter. 0 for the second. Then controller, dot left stick, dot y, dot value for the third parameter. Set v3, aim, to a new vector 3. Pass controller, dot right stick, dot x, dot value for the first parameter. 0 for the second, and controller, dot right stick, dot y, dot value for the third. Now, we need a couple local variables to inform us if either stick has any action. Let's start by declaring a new float, named movement, underscore, amount, and set it equal to the absolute value of v3, movement, dot x, plus, the absolute value of v3, movement, dot z. Declare another float, named aim, underscore, amount, and set it equal to the absolute value of v3, aim, dot x, plus, the absolute value of v3, aim, dot z. These variables take and convert the controller's left and right stick values to positive numbers then add them together. Let's declare another variable of type vector 3, named camera, underscore, rotation. Set this equal to a new vector 3, passing in camera, dot main, dot transform, dot forward, dot x as the first parameter, 0 as the second, and camera, dot main, dot transform, dot forward, dot z as the third parameter. We will use this variable to keep our movement and rotations relative to the camera angle. Write an if statement to check if aim amount is greater than zero. If this condition is true, the user is moving the right stick on the controller, and we need to take action on this. Start by declaring a new quaternion, named target, underscore, rotation, and set it equal to quaternion, dot look rotation. We will pass the result of another quaternion dot look rotation method with camera rotation as the argument and multiply this look rotation by v3 underscore aim. This line of code might look a bit confusing, but it's pretty straightforward. The second look rotation method converts the vector 3 camera rotation to a quaternion. This enables the first look rotation method to return an altered quaternion of the camera rotation multiplied by our aiming vector. V3 aim. Now, set our character's rotation using transform dot rotation. Set it equal to quaternion dot rotate towards 
passing in our current rotation using transform.rotation as the first argument, target underscore rotation as the second argument, then our rotation speed variable, multiplied by time, dot delta time, as the third and final argument. Declare a new vector 3 variable, named walk, underscore, aim, underscore, direction. Set it equal to quaternion, dot look rotation. We will be passing in a new, vector 3, with negative v3 aim, dot x, as the first argument, 0 as the second, and v3 aim, dot z, as the third. Then multiply the result of look rotation by v3 movement, to get the desired value. We now have the aiming data needed for the animator, so let's pass it through. Call the setFloat method of the animator class using animator.setFloat. Pass the name, aim underscore x, as the first argument, walk aim direction, dot x, as the second, a damping time of 0.15 as the third, and time, dot delta time, as the fourth and final argument. We can copy and paste this line of code, making changes to the first two arguments. Change aim x to aim y, then change walk aim direction dot x to walk aim direction dot z. That should do it for this conditional statement that checks and handles if the user is aiming. Let's handle what needs to happen when aim amount is not greater than zero. Add an else statement and navigate inside it. Write an if statement to check if movement amount is greater than zero. If this condition is true, it means the user is moving the left stick and we should take action on it. Start by declaring a new quaternion, named target, underscore, rotation, and set it equal to quaternion, dot look rotation. We will pass the result of another quaternion, dot look rotation method, with camera, rotation, as the argument, and multiply this look rotation by v3, underscore, movement. This is the same as the line above, but we are basing our target rotation on the movement vector this time, instead of the aiming vector. Now, set our character's rotation using transform, dot rotation. Set it equal to quaternion, dot rotate towards, passing in our current rotation using transform, dot rotation as the first argument, target underscore rotation as the second argument, then our rotation speed variable, multiplied by time, dot delta time, as the third and final argument. Finally, outside the scope of the if condition, we must set the remaining animator parameters. Do so by calling animator, dot set float, passing in movement, underscore, amount, as the first argument, and the movement amount variable as the second. Then call the animator, dot set bool method, passing in, is, underscore, aiming, as the first argument, then aim, underscore, amount, greater than zero, question mark, true, colon, false, as the second argument. This is a ternary conditional operator, if the condition on the left side of the question mark is true, it will return the value on the left side of the colon. If the condition is false, it will return the value on the right side of the colon. Save your script and head back to Unity. In order for this script to work, we need to make sure that our animator is using root motion. In the inspector, make sure apply root motion is checked. Save your project and enter play mode. We now have a twin stick controller that is using root motion and is based on the camera's forward direction. If you don't want to use root motion, but rather a more traditional approach, Unity's character controller might be just what you're looking for. With your player object selected, Navigate to the Inspector window and click the Add Component button. Select the Physics tab, then select the Character Controller from the list of options. You may need to adjust the parameters of the component to match your player model. Once you are happy with the settings, jump back to the Player Controller script. Start by declaring a private character controller and name it Character underscore Controller. Now declare a new private float named Speed underscore, current, and initialize it to zero. Then, declare another private float, named speed, underscore, while, underscore, running, and initialize this to four. Lastly, declare one more float, named speed, underscore, while, underscore, aiming, and initialize this one to two. Now, let's get a reference to the character controller from within the start method, by setting character controller equal to 
get component and pass character controller as the data type. Excellent, let's head to the bottom of the update method. Just beneath the code where we set our animator values, write an if condition to check if our animator has root motion applied by calling animator dot apply root motion and checking if it's equal to false. If this condition is true, then root motion of the animator is unchecked and we should manually apply motion to the controller. Start by setting the speed current field equal to aim amount greater than zero question mark speed while aiming colon speed while running. Remember, this is just another ternary conditional check against this condition. If true, we set speed current to speed while aiming, and if false, we set speed current to speed while running. Next, declare a local variable of type vector 3, named move, underscore, direction, and set it equal to quaternion, dot look rotation, passing in camera rotation as the argument, then multiply it by our v3 movement field. Perfect. Now call the character controller dot move method and pass in move direction multiplied by speed current multiplied by time dot delta time. And that's all there is to it. Save your script and head back to Unity. Enter play mode and give it go. You'll now notice that the player is moving based on the character controller instead of root motion animation. There isn't a right or wrong when it comes to game development, so pick whichever method best suits your needs and roll with it. I hope you found this video useful, and I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments section below. If you'd like to show support for my channel, smash that thumbs up button like you're trying to skip dialogue from a game you've played a thousand times. If you want to continue this exciting journey through game development with me, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Remember, game development is a journey. See you at the next checkpoint.